If you take a cricket ball, soak it in kerosene, set it alight, and fire it from a cannon, you'll get some idea of the demon's speed. When he bowls, there's a smell of burnt leather in the air. His mighty thighs lifted like the pistons of the Melbourne Express. His boots hammered the ground like a mob of wild horses. Angry blasts of air whistled through his nostrils. The ball left his hand like a red streak. The consensus of opinion afterwards was that it was on the off. But no one really saw it. I just love bowling quick. Every day I wanted to bowl, all I worried about was bowling quick. I didn't worry about trying to swing this or trying to do this leg cutter or all this sort of, you only did that if nothing else worked, you know, and that was a waste of time. Um, just bowl quick. If you bowl quick enough, like I said before, I don't care who they were, it, it, it's pretty hard to play. The feeling you get when you let go of that ball and you see the batsman jump and you see the keeper go up, take a high one above his head, it's a pretty awesome feeling and um, it, it does pump you up and then probably the next ball you might try and bowl a bit too quick. So you just got to pull your head back in a little bit and just say, OK, let's just bowl that nice line length again. Because the thing that does get your pace is certainly when you're running in, your approach at the crease and the way that you follow through. It's always good to bowl fast. It's just, it feels good to me rather than anyone else. But it just feels good to me when I run in, charge in. Eventually I'm going to be slow after five, six years' time, you know. Then I'll be slowing down. So as long as I'm young, I'm, I'm, I'm full of energy and I'm, I can bowl fast. So I like to keep on doing it. They call it express pace. It's bowling at over 150 kilometres an hour, a speed that intimidates and frightens batsmen and brings cricket crowds alight. When the contest is on, the fear is often palpable. The threat and the danger, real. These hostile men who tear in to hurl a hard red ball into the pitch before it rears up on the batsman just 20 metres away are the kings of speed. You can hear it in the crowd. When a fast bowler is throwing the ball, you, know, you can almost hear the people, you know, they suddenly sit up straight in their seats where they might have been slumping before and there's a bit of a ooh, you know, just sort of that low ooh goes around the ground. There is nothing more exciting than a fast bowler who gets angry against a batsman who's pretty good. I mean, people love to see the hook shot played. And, you know, for me, if you ask me what I'd like to see right now um, against the Australian batting lineup, which is a very aggressive batting lineup, I'd like to see Shoab Actor because you know that he's going to try and bounce Ricky Ponting and you know Ponting's going to try and hit him out the ground. Same applies to Hayden, same applies to Gilchrist. They're going to, they're going to take him on and that's just a wonderful spectacle. It just can't get better than that. It is wonderfully exciting to, to watch these guys come hurtling in and let it go and, and you know look at the speed gun and see what sort of times they're clocking and, and I, look it, it's, a, it's a, a terrific part of the game and I'm glad that we've got fit strong people who can do that because uh, yeah people go and watch that and, and uh, you know um, Shane Warne has left a wonderful legacy with his leg spin bowling and we see that with the kids all want to bowl like, like Shane Warne but now there's a, a good crop who want to be speedsters like, like Brett Lee and Shah Vakta and I reckon that's terrific for the game. From my perspective, being probably brought up in Perth with fast wickets and the whacker and its heyday in the 70s, I think there was nothing better than going to the cricket and, and occasionally going side on and when you'd see Lily and Thompson and the ball just fly through to Marsh and the slips cordons, I think it was just great for cricket. It was just magnificent to see the, just how quick they could bowl. There's always a, a real hush around the grounds when uh, you know, someone is bowling fast, whether it was Ambrose, you know, or um, you know, playing against Akram or something like that. It was always a real hush around the ground, and you get that similar sort of feel when Brett bowls now, and everyone's on the edge of their seats, knowing that something possibly could happen any ball. So it's a it's a good feeling, particularly when you're, you're standing in slips to one of them. Got him, yes, beautifully taken. It's left that time. 
Whitley has struck. Most fast bowlers that I've known, the very good ones, have got a bit of white line fever in them, I think. And they cross that white line and, uh, you know, they, they're there and they're, they're not out to deliberately hurt anybody, but they, they do know they can intimidate and they use that as a psychological weapon. It's just knowing you've got that power, you know, to dominate. It's a funny thing, you, you would never know it unless you were there, you know, unless you're a quick bowler and the opposition there. I mean, they honestly had fear in their eyes. I don't care how they were, how, who they were, how good they thought they were, whatever, even when you play international. Mate, it's not a good feeling to know that you look around and the blokes are standing over there on the hill sort of thing, uh, the slips are, you know, they're miles back and you think, how in the hell's the ball going to carry there? If it's carrying that far, it won't want to hit me on the way through. <laughs> if I miss it, I'll make sure it misses me because it's going to hurt. So it's, and there's nobody in front of the stumps, you know, so you're thinking, God, what's going on here? And the, the bowler's sitting there with an angry look on his face saying, just get in there and, and uh, do your best. The fearsome speed of the fastest men in cricket has made them legends. Long has the debate raged over who was the quickest of all time. Names like Spofforf, Larwood, Lindwall, Tyson, Thompson, Lilly, Roberts and Holding are often mentioned. We will never know the answer, but we do know they all had raw pace and they all had the batsmen ducking and jumping whenever they had to face one of them. I honestly think that uh, people like seeing a batsman struggling and uh, struggling to lay bat on ball, uh, getting hit a little bit. Um, you know, not, not dangerous, like getting hit in the ribs or, you know, getting hit on the shoulder. I, I honestly think that people do enjoy seeing that and seeing that intimidation factor. It is ferocious. I mean, I just admire these guys so much. I mean, I, but I admire a previous generation even a little bit more because they didn't have the benefit of helmets. Frank Tyson once wrote that the ball leaves their hands and covers the regulation 22 yards with such velocity that it defies normal human reflexes. The fact is, a 160 kilometre an hour delivery reaches the batsman in 0.438 of a second. According to research, it takes a batsman about 0.3 of a second to see the ball, predict its course and decide on a stroke. It takes a further 0.3 of a second to perform the swing. It means the batsman needs to start reacting before the ball is delivered. It, if you relate to 160 kilometres an hour as a release, it's not that a great distance between you and the batsman. The one thing that is evident is the fact that the batsman doesn't typically have enough time to react to a ball. So they start, they have to read cues off the bowler as they're in the delivery action. Now, the key to that, of course, is that the better bowlers, those that really are express, they sometimes can put the ball straight through the batsman before they've had time to react at all.